Hiya loves and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been a hot minute since I did a theatre review and today is going to be a very special review of 101 Dalmatian which is currently showing at the Regent's Park Open Air Theatre. I was lucky enough to see this with my partner Adam. Uh, you may know Adam already from Adam Martin TV. Uh, his YouTube channel is fantastic and he makes some really in-depth content about gosh broadcasting history tv history idents now reviews everything so do go and check it out so without further ado let's get adam on let's do the review is that my bit yeah come on well, hello. so adam welcome hello. welcome to this side of youtube yes welcome to my channel <laughs> <laughs> I've jumped over, crossover. Let's start by just chatting about the show itself because a lot of you watching this may know 101, 101 Dalmatians from the uh, Disney film. Mm. Um, it was originally a animated film. It was, yeah, 1961. 1961. The film. Then in 1996, I believe, mm -hmm. it was a live action film with the wonderful Glenn Close yeah. as Cruella de Vil. I actually think the re the live action remake is like the one or like one of the few Disney live action remakes I think I personally prefer over the original. Yeah. That might seem blasphemous to some, but I don't know, I just to be fair, I think I watched the remake first and I think Glenn Close, as you all know, she just she can't yeah. her it's version amazing. of Cruella is so and I think to be honest, a lot of people since then have not stolen, but you know, as any actors do, they they take a bit of her yeah. Cruella, I think. She's such a phenomenal actor anyway, that for her to take on such a villainous and quite sassy role, mm. I think was quite memorable. And I feel the same way about the live action film. I remember watching that as a kid and absolutely loving it. I mean, what's not to love about Dalmatians? <laughs> they're they're, they're just, very cute. They're, they're very so cute. cute. I love it. Mm. Doggles. Let's get on to the show itself, which, well, how long has it been on now? It's a couple been, of months, couple I think. Of months. It's really important to note, actually, that this is a brand new musical adaption of the show. It's not Disney-fied, if you will. No. Um, and so all of the music is brand new and that was something that for me I was quite interested in because I, I always like seeing how pre-existing stories are adapted into shows and whether there's uh, a good through line through the music you know are, are there any catchy songs there was a song in the show that we really really loved mm. which we'll get onto a little bit later but let's chat about the sort of the concept of the show because of course Cruella de Vil in the original wants to make a fur coat with Dalmatian's fur and that's how the story is sort of set out. She loves uh, fur from various animals and when she sees Pongo and Purdy, that's it. She's like, I need to have these dogs. She doesn't have the best intentions, so she doesn't actually care about the dogs. No. She's really just in it to have a really nice outfit. One of the standout performances in the cast had to be Cruella herself. Absolutely. It was Kate Fleetwood who, she's got a very like distinct look about her. She's got this very sort of mysterious look. And so I thought it was great casting really. Yeah, I think, and, and like we were just saying earlier, she there were elements I think I saw of, that reminded me of Glenn Close's. And I, it, you know, it's always gonna, when, when Glenn Close delivers a performance like that, it's always gonna be hard to sort of, not even top that, just sort yeah. of be as memorable as that. But what I liked was, I guess it leads to the story, which we'll get to in a sec, but I think it was in some of the songs I could see if Glenn Close, because obviously in the Glenn Close film, she, there's no songs. Yeah, there's no but songs. I thought to myself, if Glenn Close's Cruella did sing, I'd imagine it'd be like yeah, this. You sort yeah. of get the, the more maniacal nature, you know, towards the end of the film when she's sort of lost her rag. I mean, she's always yeah. lost her rag, but when she just completely goes for it. and yeah. um, But even when she isn't, like the cool, more like calm, conniving inside. They've, um, I mean, I don't want to talk about it now, but they've, they've, they've brought that to like the modern day in a very, what I thought was a very clever way. Slight um, spoiler here, if you are planning on uh, watching the show, Cruella is, as Adam said, she's been brought into this modern age. She is an influencer on mm. social media, so that is her. That's her persona, really. She's very much in 
this world of needing likes for validation and approval. She wants to be incredibly famous. But yeah, Kate did an incredible job. What a powerful voice. Incredible showcase of her skill as an actor singer, I mm. think. A uh, very, very strong belt as well, which I absolutely loved. I think she sang one note at one point and I was just on the floor because I enjoyed it yeah. so much. I yeah. think was it in the song. I don't know if the soundtrack is available anywhere, like, you know, on any of the streaming. Yeah, Sure, but actually. if it is, I think the song you're referring to is, uh, I think it's I Can Smell Puppy. Yes. Oh. Which is sort of like a, her villain song in the second act. And yeah. I won't say much more, but if, if, if the soundtrack is out there and you find it, I mean, listen to it all. But I think yeah. that one is really Cruella's moment to like, shine, it, musically at least, or vocally. Yeah, definitely. And I think it was nice to hear the sort of different styles of music they'd brought into the show and there were some beautiful musical moments in there. I think one of my favourite songs had to be All of Our Kisses. Emma Lucia took the lead on that. She was the voice of Purdy, which is the female Dalmatian in the show. I'd seen her previously in Once the Musical um, as the lead girl. I, I thought she was incredible then and she really did deliver in this role. I liked the fact that both she and other people in the cast had regional accents from all around the yeah, UK. Yeah, yeah. It was really, um, I don't know, it kind of made it quite authentic and quite sort of true to life, you know, because you go to places like London, for example, and there's every single walk of life there. So I think to have all of these different voices and characters was just sort of a lovely way to tell the story. And I know you really like that song as well. Yeah, it was definitely like the emotional uh, peak of the, in terms Absolutely. of the music. I think the only thing I'd say about the music generally, and I can't remember if you agreed with this or not, but I think, I mean, before the show started, we had one of the programmes and as most musicals do, it lists all the songs like in, yeah. in order when they appear. And I think I remember saying it to, I was like, oh, there's quite a lot of, songs yeah um, and i thought is it going to be like uh i guess like a lame is thing where it is you know the story is just told through song like there's not really any scenes as such yeah and it turns out it, well again mild spoiler but like it's it's not like lame is there are lots of scenes and yeah. i guess my only thing was i think there were one or two songs i can't think of any of the names in particular where i thought either you could have trimmed it or it didn't need to it felt a tiny bit overstuffed yeah. with music at points, I think. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. There were a couple of moments generally in the show where it felt quite either tech heavy or they'd maybe added a little bit too much music in or maybe it was just that the songs were a little bit too long. This is definitely a family show and I oh, think yeah. there were certain aspects of the show that were definitely aimed at a younger audience. It didn't detract from our enjoyment, I don't think. Mm. But like you say, I think the music that was in it, not every song was massively memorable or perhaps necessary to the storyline but that being said it was it was really enjoyable to watch very wholesome made you feel all warm and fuzzy it <laughs> certainly by the end of it did. yeah yeah <laughs> and i think for me as well it, i have to say about the puppetry within the show oh, it was beautiful really simple as well like there were child actors in the show and i think for them it was like a really good experience of puppetry, but simple. The child actors had um, sort of smaller puppets to deal with, but that worked so well. I think it showed the progression in the size of Dalmatian uh, puppets that they had. And I just really enjoyed the that aspect of it. I thought the actors worked really well with the puppets, which is a huge skill in itself because usually they're quite big. Um, you know, it takes multiple people to handle them. So, I mean, God knows how much time they spent rehearsing that, but Aye. it's physical. It's very physically demanding. And it's what we've seen in the last 10 years in theatre of, like, I guess what really... I mean, puppetry's been in theatre forever, but I guess, like, the sort of renaissance in big big show puppetry that I yeah. guess started with War Horse, like, yeah. 10, 15 oh God, years yeah. ago, and has been continued in things like, I think, Lion Witch in the Wardrobe recently, and uh, yeah. Life of Pi. The um, Lion which, King? As well. The Lion King, yeah. So if you've yeah, seen yeah. any of those shows, I imagine the puppetry, you get you're gonna get a similar level of Yeah. Ex it's that thing of I think there are points in this show where well I certainly you sort of forget for a split second you you yeah. forget that it isn't an actual dog. It's a 
it's a puppet sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, absolutely. Just as a fun teaser, we won't, obviously it's called 101 Dalmatians. Are there 101 Dalmatians? I don't think, we won't spoil that, but I think you won't be disappointed with the, uh, with the answer. Tempted to just say it right here, right now, but there was a moment in the show where I, I was quite tearful with joy, with happy tears, because there was a certain appearance from a certain <laughs> furry um, thing. I'll, I'll give you two guesses, uh, <laughs> what that could be. There's been a lot of sort of mixed reviews about whether that was necessary in the show and mm. for me I, I that felt like a full circle moment. It's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, if you haven't guessed by now just rewind it and double check but I think yeah, it's pretty yeah, yeah, straightforward. Yeah. I have to mention this because it's probably one of my favourite performances within the show was um, the actor George Bookery. I think that's how you say it. I hope that's how you say it. Playing Jasper. Mm. So you had Jasper and Casper. They were like the sidekick to Cruella. And for me, uh, Jasper was really just effortlessly funny. Mm. I think it helped that he had a Mancunian accent because, <laughs> as a lot of you know, I'm from Manchester. Um, really? Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> no way. He, he was just brilliant. I thought he had a great stage presence, really sort of easy to watch and engage with. Like, it didn't feel like you were watching a performer. It mm. felt like you were just watching, you know, a person, like you were a fly on the wall with him. Um, and, of course, Casper is played by uh, Johnny Weldon, That's who right. is a bit of a social media sensation. <laughs> so that was great to finally see him in um, in a theatre production as well. Yeah. They are sort of like the, I guess it's the class of like little and large sort oh, of, God, yeah, uh, sort of roles. But yeah, but again, brought to the modern day, I thought quite well out. Cause I think from what I remember in the, uh, the live action film, I think they're called Jasper and Horace in the, yeah, I think you're right. I, th I think, and one of them is what's his name, uh, the Hugh Laurie. Um, oh God, yeah. I can't remember. Oh, I God. think it's Jasper. Yeah, I can't. Sorry for the other actor. I know Hugh Laurie is one of them. I remember that. In that portrayal, they're just they're very much the same. They're just bumbly. Whereas yeah, here, I think yeah. they're they're more distinct from each other. Yes. I think, which I quite liked. Yeah, there was quite a clear difference between the two personas. Again, for a younger audience, they will have recognised that you had the one that was perhaps a little bit sillier. A little bit more, you know, it took him a, a minute to realise things and then you had one that was a little bit more switched on and looking at the strategy of how they can help Cruella and that kind of thing. But yeah, overall, I, I thought it was a brilliant show. Um, perfect I, venue for it. Oh, perfect venue. I mean, I've never actually been to the Regent's Park or the Theatre. But it's been there for like 70 years this year. It's 90. Was it 90? 90, yeah, 90th anniversary. We're going to do that again. So it's been there for 90 years That's right. this year. And I think wow. we sort of said afterwards, it's it's hard to describe, I think, unless you actually see it. But it's. Mm. I think I said to you, I can't imagine that working as well in a typical, like, indoor. And yeah. I don't even, I, I couldn't even put my finger on why. But I think after it finished, the experience felt right being outside. Just sort of following on from that. In the uh, live action film, and well, and in the animated one, a lot of it is outdoors. Yeah, as so, soon as the puppies go missing, I mean, yeah, yeah. you're pretty much so it, out and about. Yeah, it did. It worked really well. It complemented the show. I did like the way they'd modernised it. Do I think all of it was 100% necessary? No. <laughs> But to be honest, they went with it and they had yeah. an idea and a concept and they went with it. And I think that was a really brave thing to do, especially with, like we were saying before, an already existing story mm. that's quite well liked. But yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really wholesome, really feel good. I left feeling really happy. I enjoyed the music. It's one of those that I think I would encourage people to go and see, you know, whether you're perhaps like us we just went as a couple maybe you're going as a family i think it's there's something in there for everybody mm. i think yeah, yeah i'd agree with that all i'd say is regent's park love you, you you've got a really nice <laughs> venue really really nice park we walk yeah. around it oh, so God, they, yeah but when um when we left i think un, unless you're very familiar already with regent's park because yeah. we as i said we'd never been obviously by the time we left it was really dark there were lights and there are signs but those signs are quite small and for myself in particular, for those who don't know, I'm, I'm partially sighted. Mm -hmm. So that's not, and obviously you're in a park, your Google yeah. Maps isn't going to be its strongest. So we were, we mainly were just following other yeah, people. It, it was it was a bit of a maze really, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So I'd say, I know it's an old park, maybe just get some bigger signs, yeah. that's all, just big boards or 
if you have, I know it's hard with staffing, but even if you have some staff who could be positioned at certain yeah, points, yeah. just saying it's that way, it's that way. Rest assured, we did get out. We didn't we did. spend weeks in there. Yeah, aside from that though, I think, yeah, great show, lovely venue. Um, and hopefully, I, I, I can't remember when it's coming to an end. Is it end of September or something end like that? End of August, actually. You've All right, got a couple so you of weeks. A couple of weeks. A couple of weeks to go but, and see the show. Mm, but I'd hope it'd go somewhere else. Yeah, I do hope so. Fingers I think crossed. When we went, it was almost sold out. And that, oh, was, yeah. that was amazing. And that was like right in the middle of summer. Yeah, go and catch it if you can. Um, mm. Tickets are quite reasonably priced if you're on a budget. Um, I mean, this one treated me for my birthday to go and see it. So I was like buzzing. Yeah. We had really good seats. It's all tiered as well. And with it being yeah, outside, yeah. even if you get a seat, when you look on a computer, if it looks like you're far back, yeah. you're not necessarily, unless you have extremely poor vision or something, like, or issues with long distance. Like, because we, we were sort of sat in like the second tier, so like further back, but mm. we were in the middle. But in a way, we got to see the whole stage, oh, yeah, really. It's perfect. So don't let a computer put it. Don't think, oh, we're near the back. Like, mm. it's it's tiered enough that unless you sat behind, I don't know, like an eight foot giant, you're still going to yeah. see everything. Yes. Thumbs up from us. Yes. yes. Go and see it. Yeah. And well done to all the cast and crew as well. Absolutely. Good job. Great job. So. There we have it. That's our review of 101 Dalmatians. It's been an absolute joy to have you. Oh, thanks. That's, that's very Thank, kind. Thanks for thanks. coming on, dude. Uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, pal. Thanks to all you <laughs> lot for watching as well. If you're not subscribed to this one, you should definitely subscribe and like this video and do, do all indeed. of those things. And, you know, I guess let Becca know in the comments if you've seen this show or if you are yeah. if you want to or if you do see it just you know let Becca know what you think yeah I'd love to have a chat about it because like I was saying before there's been quite a mix of reviews some people have absolutely loved it some people have been a bit unsure so yeah do comment your thoughts down below if you get to see it yourself but aside from that I'll be back very soon probably with more theatre reviews maybe even with this one right here and until the next time bye <laughs>